Oh, hey, no, you got you you, you got to sit there. Well, how's, well, how's this? well, okay, all right, okay, fair enough. Maybe there just back go. it. Just okay, here, there we go. Swing it. Oh, there you go. Back straight, straight. No, no, wait, wait. Go forward. Go forward again. Straighten out. Okay, now back. Look, there you go. Straight back now. Straight back. Straight back. Keep coming. Keep coming. No, no, no. You turned it. I said straight ah. back. You, there you go. Keep coming. No, you got it now. Got it now. Okay, and stop. Oh, okay, oh, oh. great. Okay, stop. Right. let's let's just, if I may. Here we go. Okay. Look. Okay. Yeah, it's not easy, right is no, it? No, it's not easy. There Ooh. it is. Good tread. <sighs> Welcome to Hey EW. I am RJ City, and my guest is Roderick Strong. Hey. Hey. Hello. How are you? So good. But let's talk about you. You are from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which explains a lot. Was the water really clear there? I don't know, actually. Wow. You were just dehydrated the whole time? I was eight months old okay. when I left, so mm -hmm. I actually don't remember it at all. And, and how old were you before you realized, oh my, I was born in Wisconsin? Like 12. Right, and you said any other state will do. I was like, thank it. you parents for not making me live there. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you and I love you. You know who else is from Wisconsin? You know who else is from Eau Claire, Wisconsin? Who? Lead singer of pop folk band Bonnie Vare. How could two men born in the same place be so wildly different? How old is he? I don't know how old he is. It's not coming on the show. I'm just saying, you know. You, you ever you ever want to be the lead singer of a pop folk band? No, just a drummer. Okay. If you had to drum on a pop folk album, what would the name of it be? <sighs> Give me some. Okay. Like help me out. Here. You know how this works. Yeah. I had only the strong. Mm. What the neck? And a rod and a dream. Oh, definitely a rod and there a dream. There we go. Let's move on. You started training to wrestle at the age of 12. What part of that was not child abuse? Uh, I did it to myself, so. Yeah, but None you can't consent at that age. You signed a waiver and you said, come on, let's bump. Exactly. Okay, fair enough. And you were trained by Jim the Anvil Neidhart. Oh, yeah. So just to paint the picture for the folks at home, Jim Neidhart trained a 12-year-old. Mm-hmm. Okay. And obviously not very well, because you don't have a goatee, you don't have a barrel chest, and you don't have a hardened gut. Did he teach you anything? Well, when I was younger, I did. Okay. And then if you, you look at my early career, I was definitely going for the gym. Yeah, oh, yeah. That deal? I was trying to see how far. <laughs> yeah, just... And then it went back down so it nicely. It did. Thank you. Deflated quite nicely. <laughs> All of this essentially happened because your father wanted to be a wrestler, and this is basically where the babysitting money went. Well, my dad didn't really want, he just wanted to hang out with his friends and mm -hmm. say he was doing something. Right. I mean, he didn't care, because he was 39 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. Bad age to start wrestling. I know, right? But, yeah, it just, man, it was just really to hang out with his friends and, and But according fun. to my research, your father was a pro wrestler and an Elvis impersonator. That he was. Was your father the honky-tonk man? No. Uh, no, no. He did play the Honky Tonk Man's guitar one time, though. Okay, great, but, but then what was he thinking? That genre is pretty well covered. He actually did it because it was my idea. But the Elvis impersonating or the wrestling? The Elvis impersonator. You wanted your father to become an Elvis impersonator. No, he already was one. And you said, why don't you wrestle? And I said, well, hey, I want to be able to be your manager. Uh-huh. And my name is the jester. Really nice. And every king has a jester. I see. So I'm it was getting our it. way to do something together. Mm -hmm. Let me put it like this. What emotional void do you think your father had, and have you learned to handle yours any better? Substantially. Excellent. And I'm not sure about my dad. He's still working through that one. OK. I'm not going to ask you to do Elvis, but can you do your father's Elvis? Uh-huh. Really nice. I was one. I actually used to have a custom-made Elvis suit myself when and I was then a young man. What happened? I just lost it. You know, I do see a little Elvis in you, and I sometimes I wonder if Cedric is secretly nothing, buried in the backyard. Nothing was funnier to me, though, than all of the people that would come to these Elvis events. Mm -hmm. And that was actually the biggest question I got asked. When are you going to do this? Mm -hmm. When are you going to be Elvis? And you said, no. I, have I more, said, never. I have legitimate things Other to do. than when I was seven and eight years old. Never. It's a phase. We all go through the Elvis phase. <laughs> you were part of the original Ring of Honor. 
with guys like Jay Lethal, Nigel McGuinness, Samoa Joe, and a bunch of people I won't name for a variety of reasons. Who aged the worst? Wow, it's a deep one. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, mm. there's just so many. Such bad skin. <laughs> Jesus. Well, the early 2000s Indies were not a healthy time. You no, agree? it was wild. Yeah, wellness it's, it's, didn't really enter the picture then. Hmm. What's the unhealthiest thing you ever did? Oh, I can't talk about okay. it here. Okay, and, yet, and yet. how did you survive that and end up looking so good? Just lucky. Oh, <laughs> well, you do that smelling know. thing you do. Yeah. That, does that help? It does. You just give a sniff of... <laughs> yeah, the smelling salt. No need to elaborate. In Ring of Honor, you were part of a faction known as Generation Next. Which is now? Generation now? Is next. You, you were next, but we next, next was but then. Now we're now. Now you're, so you're generation now, but then you were next. Exactly. And next, then now. Okay, so if we you were, were. the next now. But if you were generation next now, then when would be the next now? Right now? Yes. So if not generation then generation now, then generation next generation when? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Works for me. You're called the Messiah of the Backbreaker. Yes. I How know. hard is it to become that? I, I just think it's a short walk from average backbreaker user to Messiah. Because you think, uh, your normal wrestler does a backbreaker what? Once every three matches? That's pretty accurate. So if you do two in a match, it's all of a sudden it's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Oh, 100%. Excellent. And just the amount of time that mm -hmm. I spent honing. And beating up my buddy and just trying everything out on Right. Him. There's a lot of time invested in that. Do you think Jesus would be a good wrestler? He could definitely get sympathy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think he would have gotten out of developmental. He just, he always got the mixed reaction, you know? Never quite sure how to book him. <laughs> Why do you wear little boots? You know, that's all Trent Beretta's fault. Okay, blame him. You it can is. call him out. Trent, you SOB, Ooh. making fun of my boots, mm. making people around the world make fun of my boots. But I love my boots. So if you got a problem with my boots, you can come get some. Wow. And I'll put one of them right up your butt. Wow. Well, he's already been on the show, so I'm not going to have him back. No, you don't need to. You're one Just of those. Just let him know. Okay. I will. He got the message. He watched it. You're one of those guys who has multiple finishing moves, because why make things simple? Let's go through a few of them right now. Let's do it. You got a brain buster called the end of heartache. Who's? Mm. That's a solid question. Mm -hmm. I think mine. Okay. The whole, whole idea of it is to lead me to a situation that I would feel satisfied in. I was gonna say maybe it's the opponents because they'd be unconscious and then they can't be sad. Yeah, but I feel like they're gonna have a lot of heartache when they wake Afterwards. up and realize yeah, that makes what sense. I did doing. You also have a move called the Gibson Driver in tribute to 80s pop sensation Debbie Gibson. She was one of my favorites. Wasn't she great? Oh my God, Excellent. it was amazing. I'm just happy it wasn't Mel. <laughs> Talk about Messiah of the Backbreaker. <laughs> you often yell the name of your best friend. What are you talking about? You know what, let me put it another way. Physicist John Dalton is credited with discovering the... Adam! Sir. If I want the sum of apples you have and apples I have, what would I have to do? Adam! Complete this sentence, up and... Adam! Moving on. I heard your wife... It was a little problem. Like no, 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 it's good research. Happy to let the people know you're intelligent. You know all these things about the world. Okay. I heard your wife is a little problematic. I just want to say, if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. I appreciate that. Thank you. She's often barefoot. Don't you think that's a little regressive? So you have to actually made me go barefoot more often. Really? So you've come to her level? When I was walking, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, you can do all the caveman diets you want, but let's get her a comfortable walking shoe. No. I mean, let me lay this out. She bore your child, she makes bread, and she's barefoot? 
And she cooks really well. That's just some dark web <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hi. Hello. Hey. Hey. Yeah, have a seat. Have a seat. Yeah. Make yourself yeah. comfortable, yeah. my lady. Comfortable. Sure. Great. Excellent. How are you? Wonderful. Lovely too. Mm. You know the deal. Moldova. <clears throat> That's a hike. Huh? A little bit. Yeah, you can't exactly pack up the van and see the fam for the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Sell me on Moldova. They make really good wine. Excellent. Yeah. And I assume you stop. Yeah. Uh, not so much. Okay. Yeah. Did you marry her because Moldova is such a hike that you wouldn't have to ever visit? Oh, Christmas in Wisconsin again. You know, mm. that kind of thing? Hanukkah. Travel would be there. Would be difficult. Right. Hanukkah. Right. You said Hanukkah. Yeah. Let me get to my next question. Marina, you are Jewish. Roddy is the Messiah. Is it hard to reconcile an interfaith marriage? We meet in the middle. Okay. You do meet in the middle. We you guys meet right in the middle. You put your differences like aside and, and yeah, you guys bond over over beating the shit out of people, you know? And I think that's great. Yeah, you know. There's no ebb and flow with you two. No. It's hardened person that can kick your ass, married to the hardened person that can also kick to your ass, right? I'm begging right one of you to... Mm hmm Yeah. Maybe you could start journaling at some point. Which one of you do you think is the softest? Oh, definitely me. Really? Oh, yeah. Really? You think so? Oh, yeah. I mean, I survived, survived communism, uh -huh. and, you know, we immigrated here, yeah. and, you know, that whole thing, that whole and yeah. had to learn English and make new friends. You just came and, from Wisconsin. Listen, I was poor, fat, my mom shot my Let's dad. Let's let it no all out. Deal. Come on. Let's keep going. There's just a lot of, you know, Poor, of fat, trauma. communist, immigrant, great stuff. Yeah, just trying to survive. Uh-huh, and, and here we are. I did it back. <clears throat> here what, we are, surviving now. Guess what? Guess what? Mm. Only the strong survive. That's sweet. That would have been a great ending, but I have another question. Thank you. You have a son named Troy. This is Wait. the most important question yeah. I got. I also understand he's a little problematic, too. Yeah. Come here, buddy. Hey. Hey, buddy. Yes, it runs in the family. <clears throat> the name Troy is of Irish etymology, directly translates to foot soldier. Gee, that's blunt. It was also a city in ancient Greece, the site of the Trojan War. Are you preparing this kid for battle? It is battle. Okay, you're just gonna sign him up for combat and start thanking him for his service already? Is that Life the plan is here? a fight. Okay. You trying to get the military benefits? Military benefits, <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Good one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You do jujitsu with your son, who is revealing his face now. Excellent. I don't think you can Wait. wear those logos on that program. You do jujitsu with your son. How do you keep him from becoming a horrible person? Because jujitsu can go either way. There's a 50% chance he'd be a, a measured, disciplined individual. 50% he starts a controversial podcast and looks like Luthez by the time he's 11. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> RJ, do you know what intuition is? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Well, that would be it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> That's fair enough. Let's let's see. Troy, are you having a good time? What did you just say? Let him know. No. Why is that, buddy? MJF is here, and that's why I came here. That's why my dad came here too, right? Right. We got a mission. What's the mission? To get my dad's friend back. Okay. Little advice to you. If your father ever starts doing Elvis, run. Well, this has been a necking, and I've mulled over the both of you. And of course, I find you to be Roderick Strong, but I also find you to be Roderick Sweet, Roderick Kind, and Roderick Understanding. And also Marina, too. You can say my last name. Marina Shafir. There you go. You don't have to listen to the podcast that your parents do. You understand what I'm saying?
Sure. Get on. See you.